And welcome to The WAN Show, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a fantastic show for you today. Anantech has published an early full review of Intel's upcoming Rocket Lake 10, uh, excuse me, 10, oh, old habit, <coughs> excuse me, 11700K processor in advance of the review embargo. How did they do this? They went to the store and bought one. Fascinating. <laughs> In other news, we are going to be letting you guys know how the verified actual gamer program will be working. I posted on Twitter a little while ago that we have a pallet worth of RTX 3080s ready, ready to rock, ready to put in the hands of verified actual gamers for their MSRP with no scalper markups. And we are going to be giving you guys the full skinny on that whole program because let me put it this way. It is more than what I already showed you in the tweet. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What do you got, Luke? I will be trying to make sure that Linus doesn't leak unnecessary information about the Verified Actual Gamer program. <laughs> Good um, luck. Also, <laughs> also uh, Google is a privacy company now. There's some weird stuff going on there. Back in 2019, they made some announcements, and now they're doing things about it, and it just feels weird and strange and odd. Uh, also, there is an Arizona House uh, bill requiring allowance for third-party payments on app platforms. Interesting. Fascinating. Oh Even with all that lobbying. Probably let's, won't go through that, but we'll see. Let's roll that intro. Oh, it passed. What? OK, yeah, we'll talk about that more later. Oh, is there no audio? Oh, yeah, there is. All right, so why don't we jump right into the headline topic? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I, well, I wanted to tell them about the headline topic, Luke. Hold on. I will hold on. I feel robbed. What, what, what did I do? Where's the new intro? I know, I know. I just, I what forgot. Happened? I forgot and didn't. You do forgot? Is it made? It, I, I'd have no idea. I didn't even ask. I'm sorry. <laughs> ah! Okay, Next no week. new intro this week. Next week, next week. All right. Anantech has published their full review of the Intel Core i7-11700K nearly two weeks early. Like, it's one thing if they get an engineering sample like Tom's Hardware always used to do, and it's like, oh, yeah, well, we've got some numbers, but they aren't final, no final buy. This is final hardware. How'd they get it? They bought it from a European retailer for the equivalent of 469 US dollars. Nice. 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 <clears throat> One quick thing before you keep going. Uh, sponsors? Sponsor announcements? Uh, sponsor announcements. I don't think you did that at the end of the intro. Oh, uh, oh yes. Our sponsors for the show today are... Uh, I'm not sure. Ah, uh, yes. Redux, Ridge Wallet, and Squarespace. Okay. So here's how this works. <laughs> Normally, a publication like Anantech, like us, would have an NDA with Intel that would prevent them from publishing a review of a product that has, is not yet released, that has not yet uh, had the embargo lifted on it. But the way that an NDA works is if you can demonstrate that the information did not originate from you, that it was already out in the wild, the NDA is thereby deemed null and void. So, for example, if I were to make Luke sign an NDA that he can never tell the world that my eyes are actually green, for example, and I wear brown contacts because I don't want anyone to know. Yeah, that would be bad. Then if Luke broke that news, I could sue him for whatever kinds of damages I feel I'm entitled to because of, you know, the fact that you guys found out, oh, good heavens, I have green eyes or whatever the case may be. But if some, you know, paparazzo or whatever, what's the singular form of paparazzi? I, I, I can't remember. If some- Is paparazzi not single, singular? I, is it not one of those words that they like, it's singular and plural? I'm not sure. The point is, if some rogue photographer managed to catch me before I got up and put myself together in the morning with green eyes and posted it on Reddit 
and Luke were to say, yeah, he's got green eyes, I would say, hey, Luke, you, because you could have at least like helped me keep this under wraps. But I would have no legal recourse because that information was already out there. All Luke did was kind of shrug and go, yeah, and. So he hasn't actually broken the NDA. He just isn't helping to keep it anymore because it's just public closed. knowledge, anyways. Yeah, yeah, it's already yeah. it's already public knowledge. So by the way, you were correct. It's paparazzo. Oh, nice. So Luke, or excuse me. So Anantech, yeah, they might have a signed NDA with Intel, but there's absolutely nothing Intel can do when it comes to a product that Anantech goes and buys because the deal with an embargo, with an NDA is we provide you chip, you give unbiased review. So if we never provide you chip and you decide you give unbiased review, all the other terms of the agreement are basically unenforceable. In fact, this is kind of crazy. They actually notified Intel that they had the processor. This is a quote from the review. Our, and <laughs> this is great. They said they have it. And uh, the response, this is really weird. Our email to Intel seemingly generated some excitement inside and to our surprise outside of Intel. But we received a response from Intel stating that they had no comment to offer. Regarding rumors about early retail availability, Intel told Anantech, we take our embargo agreement seriously and are following up as appropriate. Well, <laughs> um, let me give you a little clue, Intel. 11700K by, hold on, let's do a little display capture here. Let's see if maybe we can find this, this rogue, this rogue processor. I, we're going to try real hard. Let's see. Let's see where to buy. Mm. Okay, we don't know. Oh, we don't know where to buy it. Wow, that's a lot of ads. Amazon, Newegg, Scan, Overclockers. Okay, well, they don't know. They don't know the news. Okay, let's keep going. Here we go. Oh, second link. Let's try again. <sighs> if, but, no, oh, the price might shock you. What a headline. Thank you, Tech Radar. It's still up at the time of writing. Wow, that was really hard. Intel is sure doing an amazing, super awesome good job of following this up and making sure that MindFactory.de does not sell any more of these Core i7-11700Ks. You know what the craziest part of this is, Luke? MindFactory.de actually lists right on the product how many they've sold. So you can actually see they are a pretty small time seller. They sold 5,600 10700Ks over the entire lifetime of the product. And even though this is an early product that I would think with all the shortages on CPUs right now, gamers would be pretty eager to get their hands on. They've sold over 240. Well, that was sure worth it. 240 <laughs> whole whole CPUs to all in the interest of or like what I mean at what cost, right? All you did was like off every other retailer on the planet and probably Intel. And definitely me cuz I'm pretty annoyed. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Like it's supposed to be that you compete with other media outlets on the merit of your coverage, right? But when it's like this, all of a sudden, it's just like a mad grab for who has the best back alley contacts to source the product uh, earlier, -er, right? Like it, the whole idea behind being a reviewer do, and having- Do you think this is a, a dirty move for a reviewer to do? Um... If, if Joe and Bob's computer shop down the street yeah. had one for some reason, would you buy it and do a review or no? Hmm. Yeah, I'd do it. Yep. Yep. So any any anger that I have is going to be directed towards the inadequacy of Intel's systems to prevent something like this from happening. 
because yeah. everybody knows the second the product is in the hands of our retail partner, it's out. It's it out. Is, if you don't do it, if an Antec doesn't do it, if if someone else doesn't do it, it there's going to be another person in line that is going to do it. Exactly. It's going to happen or a review is going to come out. It's going to be leaked. If it's, if, it's in re, if it's on a retail shelf and you can buy it, it's out. It That's the really whole matter. reason that trusted partners who abide by embargoes are supposed to have the f***ing product like two weeks, at, three weeks ahead of time so that as long as we're on the ball and we're working on the thing right away, if something like this were to happen and some retailer goes early, we at least have the flexibility to make a move. Like we can call up Intel and be like, okay, look, um, clearly this embargo is, is dead. It's dead as a doornail. So we need to go live with this thing before all the, you know, Joe's on forums are posting about it and people are confused and don't know what kind of performance they're supposed to expect. There's no, there's no reviews. Um, like we need to just go for it. And I mean, we had something like this happen actually with the 8K gaming experience that we did with the RTX 3090. Uh, there was some kind of something happened. Uh, I have some ideas exactly what happened, but um, there was a certain order that those videos were supposed to go up and that didn't happen. And so fortunately, because we were on the ball, we had access to the product early, we had our video ready to go and we were able to click publish right away because it was ready. So right now, I mean, I don't know, it's a funny thing because like I'm technically still under NDA for the 11700K, which means not only can I not comment on the performance and the price and I mean, you can see the price is right there, uh, but I couldn't comment on a Canadian or American price, which is how I typically get pricing. So I can't comment on the price. Um, I, you can I, comment on the performance, can't you? Um, I guess I could now. Because it's in their article. Except, okay, so here's where we get into a bit of the nuance. So one of the things that I can't comment on is any terms of the NDA that have not been disclosed. So for example, if there was a particular uh, embargo lift time that Intel hadn't disclosed, I wouldn't even be able to tell you when I will be able to tell you. Another right. thing is that because we are going to be getting a chip from Intel and using that for our benchmarking, I actually cannot publish my own benchmarks. So I could tell you a non-text numbers. I could just repeat those. I could make a video about it because that's out there. But if we do our own measurements and we do our own analysis, that is now our data. And we could, well, we would we would be restricted in terms of what we can tell you by the terms of our NDA. So right. at risk of breaking my NDA, because I feel like this is information that you know can't really hurt anyone too much, I don't even have one yet. So we are in absolutely no position whatsoever to respond to this because Intel went and got product out there in distribution to retail partners before even seeding media, um, or at least us. I mean, it's quite possible that others have it already. I know that um, Der Bauer, Roman, often gets stuff early because he's involved in things like overclocking validation in addition to being a reviewer, for example. Right. So I'm pretty annoyed, but I'm annoyed mostly with Intel, not with a non-tech. If I was them, I'd have done the exact same thing. I even got a, I even got a little message from Ian. Got a, got a cute little message from Dr. Cutrus over here. What the heck did he say? This, this guy, he's adorable. He's adorable. He's like, teehee. No, he didn't actually write teehee. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that doesn't really sound like he him. He goes, got something coming out late. You might want to talk about on WAN show. Just FYI. Look at this guy. Look at this, look at this clout chasing mother fucker. Okay? He knows. <laughs> he knows. He knows I can't resist it. He knows. <laughs> so I got to talk about Dr. Cutrus on the show. 
So anyway, he sends me a link to the article. So Anthony went through it. Since it's out there, why don't we talk about the numbers from Dr. Katras over at Anon Tech and Tech Tech Potato, his YouTube channel. The chip itself. Do you want to run us through it, Luke? I feel like I've done a lot of talking. It's um, so because we're going off of their numbers, uh, I, I believe this was Anthony laid it out this way. I think it's actually pretty cool the way he laid it out. So I'm just going to run through this instead of scraping off of their review. I was originally looking through their review, trying to pull some data points, whatever. Um, so it, it, it runs real hot. We know that much. Um, how does it perform? It performs significantly worse <laughs> than the Ryzen 7 5800X in 3D particle movement, AI benchmarks, Digicortex, small dwarf fortress worlds, Corona benchmark, Crisis CPU only, V-Ray, Cinebench R20, hand bake, a hand break 4K60, uh, all archiving tests, all JavaScript and web browser tests, and spec int 2017. Okay. It performs but, slightly worse. Wait, Sorry. hold on a second. I was about to say, but we would expect that because it has significantly fewer cores than a 5800X. Oops, no, I misread that. It actually has the same number of cores as a 5800X. Womp, womp, womp. Like, um, it performs slightly worse than that same pr uh, processor in the Y Cruncher multi-thread, mm -hmm. Agisoft PhotoScan, GIMP application launch, NAMD APO A1 simulation, and all gaming tests, <laughs> other than some at uh, notably high resolutions. Um, it is on par with huh. said processor in Blender, mid-sized and large Dwarf Fortress worlds, okay. Handbrake 480p Discord, and Spec 2017. It's, there, essentially, there's very few things that it's on par with it. Um, there's Luke, even fewer Luke, things Dwarf that it's Fortress, significantly better. Dwarf Fortress, okay, is That's best played- That's my favorite played, test on this list, I just have to say. It's best played in medium and large-sized worlds, okay? If you're playing Dwarf Fortress, can I just say for a second, that if you're playing Dwarf Fortress in a small world, then you are, you're a big piece of okay? You're not a, you're not garbage. a gamer. You're not human, a gamer. You're human f***ing garbage, okay? Whoa. <laughs> That's like your measure of man. <laughs> how, how big your Dwarf Fortress world is. I'm not even actually familiar with this benchmark. I, I don't even know I, exactly what the benchmark is. is me it, neither. That's great. I know it's That's a why game. It's my favorite one. It's an ancient, like, text-based game that... We used to play on like crappy netbooks, so I don't really understand. <laughs> but I'll uh, I'll I'll trust an Antec on that one. Um, but yeah, it's only slightly better than that process, or significant. Sorry, it's only significantly better than that pro than the Ryzen Seven Fifty Eight Hundred X. To be clear, in three D particle movement peak AVX by a factor of nearly six, which is pretty wi wild, and Y Cruncher single threaded. Okay, so it's the single thread king when it comes to calculating pi. I'm not gonna lie. Nice. I had um, hmm. I had higher expectations uh, based on the scuttlebutt that I had heard in the industry. I was thinking that Intel was giving up those two cores. Cause remember, this is an eight core chip that seems to be coming in as a direct replacement for a 10 core chip. Whew. which means that I was under the impression that Intel would be giving up those two cores for some very significant single-threaded performance gains. Like, I thought they were going to come back absolutely all guns ablaze and taking the gaming crown. Like, that, that, that was my expectation. Now, maybe if I hadn't read any of the rumors and I had thought that this was just going to be yet another sort of 14 nanometer reheated CPU, you know, and then, and then, whoa, we ended up with a floating point performance gain of 19% over 10th gen and integer performance gain of seven to 13% over 10th gen. I'm, I might've been impressed. I might've been really happy because I'd be like, oh, wow, I was expecting basically nothing. And I got a lot more than nothing. I got a pretty solid generational performance improvement, but I, I, I don't know. I was just expecting I was expecting it to come back absolutely For rocking. people purchasing processors, do you think it's going to matter almost at all? Well, no, because, and let me get into that. So 
Anontax review has a conclusion here that I think is interesting. Um, Rocket Lake has some regressions in core-to-core -core performance and its memory latency profile. So, okay, so that's what happens when you're making a significant architectural change, I suppose, instead of just releasing the same game, uh, same game, same CPU over and over again in different packages is... You'll... Yeah, we're not talking about EA, we're talking about Intel. Yeah, yeah, Come we'll on. gain here, we'll lose there. Thank you, Luke, that was good. I, I liked it. I, I quite <laughs> enjoyed that. Um, and then they go on to say, our results clearly show that Intel's performance while substantial, still trails its main competitor, AMD. In a core-for-core -core comparison, Intel is slightly slower and a lot more inefficient. The smart money would be to get the AMD processor. Except that I think that Dr. Cutris may have overlooked something. Let's go ahead and revisit my screen for a moment here, shall we? This right here is a Core i7-1100K. And I don't actually know what the US pricing is gonna be because Anthony's the one who sits on the Intel briefings now, not me. So it's possible he knows, but I don't. But what I do know is that typically the way that pricing works from region to region, it region to region, excuse me, is that Europe gets absolutely f on because even though their currency is worth a lot more than ours, it tends to be pretty dangerously close to a one-to-one -one exchange rate in terms of product pricing. So I think it's fairly safe to say then that a Core i7-11700K is gonna cost less than $500 in the good old US and A. So let's go ahead and try to buy a 5800X, shall we? Hmm. I don't think you read the rest of the conclusion. Me? Yeah. Oh. Well, hit me with that. So he goes on to say the smart money would blow that, like you said. However, due to high demand and prioritizing commercial and enterprise contracts, the only parts readily available on retail shelves right now are from Intel. Normally, this is where I would conclude with a comment on oh. what to recommend. But well, the clear answer during this chip crunch is to buy the processor you can, the, buy the processor you can find at a reasonable price. Well, there you go. I lied. Also, the 5800X is in stock at Amazon.com right now? I mean, there's $189 of shipping and import fees if you ship it to Canada. So I <laughs> wouldn't really recommend that, but it seems possible that this is actually that this is actually in stock right now for $449.99. What's the MSRP of this thing supposed to be? 5800 There we go. 449. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh well, if you needed one of these, now's a good time. Um Hey, wait, don't forget to use our affiliate link. Oh, wow, the 5900X on the other hand doesn't even like return a result, so that's pretty sweet. <laughs> cool. All right. So, thank you Dr. Cutris for actually indeed getting all of those details in your review. I knew I could count on you to be thorough. I was hoping to embarrass you, but uh you always get the drop on me, don't you, Ian? Tech Tech Potato yeah, we... is still a bad name for a YouTube channel. Okay. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what, what topic do you want to hit next? Got him. Got uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can talk more about how uh, NVIDIA is, is working with GPU miners. Oh, can we? Or oh, not? good. Sure. That sounds Hooray. exciting. Super fun. Okay, hit me. Uh, the, you know, the 3080 ETH mining, wait, isn't it the 3060 TI? The Ethereum mining limiter rumored to, uh, to be present on other cards is rumored to be present on the 3080 TI as well. Or 3060. I just dyslexia the heck out of this title. I'm sorry. The 3060 ETH mining limiter is rumored to be on the 3080 TI as well. Um. I'm changing. I'm changing the dog while you're trying to. That is <laughs> so rude. I saw that right at the end. I'm like, hold on a second. It is. <laughs> the, it is the one on the 3060. It is. It is the one on the 3060. <laughs> you were right. You were right. It was wrong in the dock. You were right. And then I changed it to the right thing. And then I changed it back to the wrong thing. I'm just messing with them. Sorry, guys. Oh my okay, God, go ahead, Luke. You're so, so red right now. It's great. Uh, uh, they were previously. Cur so the leaker that leaked this. Uh, Copite 7 Kimi. 
sure. hoping I'm saying that right, um, has leaked potential specs and info for the upcoming 3080 Ti, including a rumor that it has the same ETH mining limiter as the recently released 3060. They were previously correct about Ampere months ahead of launch. Um, so it should have 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X at uh, with of you keep clicking on things so I can't read it. Sorry. <laughs> with 384 bits, <laughs> um, GA102, 10,240 CUDA cores. Okay. What is life anymore? Um, and apparently, with the ETH mining limiter present, it is scheduled for an April launch. Uh, apparently, NVIDIA has changed the date three times, moving it back from the initial planned date of January, and yeah. there has been no price revealed yet. Yeah, we were expecting that there was going to be a 3080 Ti alongside uh, mobile RTX 30 series at CES this year. And so it sounds this story sounds kind of consistent with the reality that I've been living in. Um, I mean, kudos to NVIDIA for one thing, for delaying this card when they know they can't ship anything else as it is. Um, I mean, I, I it, just, it just feels kind of laughable to me. Like maybe, I don't know, maybe this is a bad take, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it out there anyway. NVIDIA and AMD both took the approach this time around of launching their new stacks top to bottom, right? So NVIDIA led with the very high-end stuff, followed up with, you know, your 3070 and then your 3060 Ti, like in their typical fashion. AMD started with the 58 and 50, excuse me, 68 and 6900 series. Um, now they're filling out the gaps with their upcoming, uh, what's, what's the one they're launching, 6700 or something like that. Uh, is it an X? Yeah, I think it's a 6700 XT. Um, sorry, there's a lot of there's a lot of model numbers in my brain going back many many years, and it really doesn't help that AMD is launching a 6800 when Nvidia has also had 6800s, and AMD has also had 6800s in the past. <laughs> it's it's hard to keep the wires from getting crossed at a certain point. Anyway, it just maybe this is a bad take, but I'm kind of looking at it going, okay, Nvidia. If you can sell 3080s all day long, and we know that you're going to have to give up some of the fab capacity that you planned to use or that you could use for 3080s to build 3070s or 3060 Ti's or 3060s, but the 3080 is a thousand dollar plus card, why don't you just make those for a while? Until like I, I like I, I'm on I'm honestly here from like a from like a, a a brutal capitalistic standpoint. Yes, you can move a lot of more volume of a four hundred or five hundred dollar card compared to a thousand or fifteen hundred dollar card or whatever the case may be. But if you don't have to move more volume, I'm pretty sure that everything that I know about like selling things. Um, would indicate that higher average sell prices are better. Fewer, larger transactions is easier than many more smaller transactions as a general rule. Now, there is also the, the possibility that, you know, you could create a negativity in the community by only catering to, you know, the very high end. It's also very likely that NVIDIA had already committed to, well, they did already commit to 3090, 3080, and 3070 at the same time. But what they hadn't committed to already was, oh, and they had probably also committed to turn off their production on the previous node of their 20 series. What they hadn't committed to yet was the 3060 series, and AMD for that matter, hadn't already committed to launch the 6700. So if you already can't deliver enough of your flagship parts, why, unless they're made of failed flagship parts, which in some cases these new products have not been, why are you trying to launch more products that are just going to make another subset of your customer base mad because they can't get it? Like if I'm someone who's waiting for a 399, you know, like a $400 card replacement because that's kind of that's like that's how much I spend on a graphics card. I might get impatient because you haven't launched a next gen replacement for me. But I'm not going to be furious that you've launched one at this supposed price and I can't get it 
because it costs 900 or 1100 dollars or whatever like what does it what's a 3060 go for on ebay right now like what, no, what would you do go for almost four grand what? i know that much what would i do i'm yeah. just not buying a card well, okay. This is, this is not a buyer's market. No, no. If you were market. Nvidia though, or AMD, oh. if you're AMD, do you launch a card today, a new card? No. I, the the thing is though that this may have been planned out so much further in the past. They might already have the packaging for it. They might already have like the logistics and everything planned already. It might it might be more damaging to not go through the motions. I don't know enough about it to say that, but yeah, no, 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 that's, that's totally fair. I mean, it's very, very possible that they booked the capacity, built these chips. They're already in the, in the pipeline to the board partners. Like, sure. Yeah. That's, that's totally fair. It's just, it's just a not little bit, great a little bit of weird optics. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay, it looks like a brand new RTX 3060 is going for uh 800 bucks will get you uh some Zotac one. 900 bucks will get you a, a tough gaming OC and then the TI is up more like in the 1200 range to start with. Up 12 That's wild, man. 1300 for a founders edition like that is utter <sighs> madness. If you have a perfectly capable GPU right now and it blows, like it, it dies, I feel very bad for you. Yeah, that's rough. If only someone was doing something to make sure that people can buy graphics cards at MSRP without a scalper markup. If only someone would make sure that verified actual gamers get their hands on graphics cards. Who will answer this call, Luke? Who will answer I don't think, this call? I don't think anyone. It's way too hard. Uh, there's, I, I can't imagine, because it, it would have to be someone new, right? It couldn't be someone in this space already. They'd have to have relationships with board partners. Yep, They'd have totally. to be able to get allocation. Yep. Getting units is going to be tough. The board partners would probably have to be on board with it. Yep. No pun intended. Oh, yeah, I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> okay. It's, it's impossible. So it's time for the big reveal. Sometime next week, we will be launching the Verified Actual Gamer Program. For our first drop, I don't want to overpromise to you guys. We are working with Asus, okay? We have only between, I don't know exactly how many we have. It's between 80 and 100 cards. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna give you guys too much detail, okay? I'm gonna be honest with you guys in a way that could get me in trouble. The reason I don't know exactly how many are coming is because one of the piece of shit middlemen that was involved in this transaction, uh, kind of oopsie daisies, accidentally lost or <clears throat> what really happened was sold to someone else some of the cards that were supposed to come to me for the verified actual gamer program. Um, oh, hold on a second. Nick is calling me. He's real upset. What do you want? <laughs> About what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just tell me, just tell me what's going on. <laughs> I think, I think he's muted, but I think I'm still with you. I think I'm still here. I have no idea what's going on at this point. I knew about the system. I knew about the plan. I was trying to hype it up. I didn't know about this part of the story. I didn't expect Nick to call. This so the point is, the point is, I don't know exactly how many of them we're going to have, but <laughs> we have done some really cool work to make sure that when these things are available in the way that they will be available, there is, I'm, nothing is perfect. But no. there is a very, very, very high probability that every single one of them will make their way into the hands of a verified actual gamer. So we're not giving you guys the full details this second, but Luke and some of the other guys on the Floatplane team have been hard at work on this from a development side, uh, from the development side of things. And what you're going to want to do is if you're a real gamer and if you need a graphics card. Okay, so we've got some RTX 3080s, RTX 3090s, 
And I believe I am allowed to tease that we are also working with AMD on some products that AMD sells. And we are also working with MSI on some products that MSI sells. So this is all going to be happening hopefully over the next few weeks. What you are going to want to do to make sure that you are in the know and getting the info as early as possible is you're going to want to watch this episode of The WAN Show where I tell you guys what else you're going to need to do. Congratulations, you already did that part. The next thing you're going to need to do is... You are going to need to make sure that you are subscribed on Linus Tech Tips. You are watching every video the instant it goes live. And the only way to do that is to make sure to ring the bell. Don't be a ding dong, okay? <laughs> That's Luke's joke. That's Luke's joke. Don't I'm be not... a ding dong, ring the ding That's dong. That's Luke's joke. Okay? I'm not taking credit for that. Uh, it, it may be that in the future, I will uh, take us over to maybe a different channel like Short Circuit, for example. Uh, but it's quite likely that this is all going to be on the Linus Tech Tips channel. Another pro tip, guys. There is an even better way to see a Linus Tech Tips video right away when it launches than ringing the bell. If you go back in time to the long, long ago of... Just looking at our publish history, you'll see that there's a bit of a pattern to when we publish our videos. I would suggest that it is likely that we will include this information somewhere in one of the videos that we published at our, let's say, typical time. Okay, does that sound good to everybody? There's a whole big thing in here that says, don't say this part, don't say this part. Should I say that part? I don't think so. No, I don't think I'm going to say that part. <laughs> so we're really excited about this. We're really excited to be working with Asus, AMD, and MSI. Those are the ones that we've uh, that we've talked to about this program. They have actually worked really hard to make this possible because, as you guys may or may not know, uh, Linus Media Group Incorporated is not exactly uh, a retailer. You know what I mean? Um, so we don't, ha we're not really set up to buy computer hardware in bulk. Um, so there was a lot of work from the Creator Warehouse team, the Flowplane team, Asus, AMD, MSI, getting all this stuff cleared um, and trying to find a way to make it make sense for everyone. And I can tell you right now, the bottom line is that the only reason that any of this makes any sense is because they actually care, they liked our idea. Uh, and they actually care about helping us get these products to verified actual gamers. So I'm I'm super excited. Uh, people like just say the part. No, no, I'm not. I'm not going to be saying the part. I was I was just messing with Luke. Uh, that stuff I really really don't want to talk about yet. <laughs> they so stay tuned, guys. This is going to be. That's the, I mean, that's the stuff that's going to be in the video, and that's why you need to ring the bell. So Floatplane, so oh, uh, Joe Soap asks, what about Floatplane subscribers? Uh, do I still need to check on YouTube? We will make sure that the video launch, okay, that the video launch is going to be at the same time on Floatplane as on YouTube. So you guys will get the same chance as everyone else. But unfortunately, I cannot give you guys any kind of advantage for the Verified Actual Gamer program. Because if I did, and Floatplane was a paid membership, which it is, then we would risk running afoul of lottery laws, gambling laws, which last time I checked get enforced pretty hardcore. And I really do not want to deal with that. My life does not need it. Okay, does that kind of make sense, guys? Linus misses NCIX so much, he just remade it better, faster, and stronger. Thanks, Cyberdyne over on Floatplane. Exactly. Exactly. We're going, we're going full circle here, boys. Okay? I started out making videos for a tech retailer, and then now I'm going to be a tech retailer that... Wait, no. I started out making video. Now I'm going to be a video maker that turns into a tech retailer. We got this. We got this. Uh, oh, wait, only in okay. like drop form. You trolls asked, is Quebec included? It's not a giveaway. It's just an opportunity to buy it at MSRP. So yes, yes, yeah. you can yeah. definitely buy it. 
Um, in response to anyone on staff who's watching this, including at Float Plane and Creator Warehouse, no, you are not eligible. Unfortunately, because you have access to the people either directly or indirectly who are working on this project, you simply cannot have one. And we, we will make sure you do not get one. Oh, oh, poor float plane staff is in the chat. We know, we know. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. rough. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hopefully you guys are hyped. We are expecting somewhere in the neighborhood. It's like, honestly, guys, I don't want to set unrealistic expectations because... Can Ozzy's join the giveaway? It's not a giveaway! It's not a giveaway, okay? It's not a giveaway. It's just a chance to buy them. Okay, so there's a few things that we need to clarify here. One is that there is nothing we can do about tariffs. If you are American and the stock that we get is... Uh, not was not imported pre-tariff, okay? We actually do have some that came in pre-tariff still. So that's how long we've been working on this. That should give you some idea. But if the stock we have, which some of it will be, is post-tariff from the Trump administration, we cannot do anything about that. There will be a 25% surcharge. Cannot help you with it. It just is what it is. If you don't like it, you tell your government you don't like it. It has nothing to do with me. Same thing if you were to buy it from the EU, for example. There is nothing I can do about any kind of value-added tax or any other kinds of surcharges. Uh, oh, okay. Apparently, I was mistaken. We do not have any that are pre-tariff. It did not end up working out that way. So they are all tariffed. Um, someone's asking about postage costs. You'll have to pay separately for that. We, we, just to give you guys some idea, we, there is not a ton of margin in computer hardware, guys. Like, it's, it's a cutthroat business, okay? Remember that time that Newegg tried to go public and it was revealed that their net profit was like 1%? Like, it is not, there's a reason I haven't tried to become a computer hardware retailer, okay? It's not that I don't know. It's not that I don't have the relationships. It's not that I don't know how to put a CPU in a box and ship it out the door. It's because I want nothing to do with that business. This is just about us making sure that whatever we can get our hands on, we have bought as much as we can in bulk, makes its way to verified actual gamers from our community, all right? Um, so yes. If you are somewhere else in the world, you will have to pay postage. It's probably going to be brutal depending where you are because we don't have amazing rates with Canada Post or FedEx or whoever else. We're still a relatively small timer. All right. Cool. So why don't we move on to... Well, my, my mic was muted. Sorry, one second. Someone was asking what currency will the cards be listed in? Uh, they'll be listed in USD. Uh, but they will be listed at pre-tariff prices because, for example, if someone in Canada were to buy them, they would not be subject to the U.S. tariffs. So does that kind of make sense, guys? Because we're in Canada, we haven't paid a tariff on them yet. You guys follow? So if we ship them to the U.S., the second they touch U.S. soil, they are subject to this 25% tariff. Again, another potentially, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Hit me. Another potentially tricky question is a moderator was asking, what about them? A moderator like on the forum? Like forum moderator, Discord moderator, Twitch chat moderator. They, to my knowledge, they, they will have absolutely no it has early... nothing to do with this. Yeah, they yeah. will have no early access to information. And yeah. uh, internally, only I and Nick and Luke are probably going to know exactly when the video is going to go live. So I think that should be fine. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yep. They are, they can be verified actual gamers, 100%. Nice. All right. Let's go ahead and, uh, oh, right. That's a really good point. Uh, if you've had bad experiences with shipments from Canada before, like Grok 23, where they've taken a really long time, maybe this just isn't the right deal for you. Uh, because the last thing I want is for this to be stuck in 
you know, shipping for two months, which can happen, absolutely. And then for you to have a real bad time because some thousand dollar product is tied up for two months. And by that time, graphics card prices are back to sanity. All right. All right. Cool. So why don't we move on to our next topic here? The, uh, oh, the sponsors for the show today. Hey, Redux.com. Redux is a PC builder that's striving to bring PC gaming to the masses. There's no price markup on the individual components, just a $75 build key. Build key? Build fee. So you just select your budget, pick the games you want to play, see how they perform, make sure it meets your expectations or increase your budget. Then you let them build your PC. Their online configurator lets you see what's going to go and in, gone inside. What does that even mean? Whatever. The point is their online PC configurator has lots of great tools to allow you to make sure that you've got something that's going to meet your expectations for the games you want to play. Plus, Redux will give you a two-year warranty for parts and labor. So don't wait. Start your build today at buildredux.com slash Linus. The show is also brought to you by Ridge Wallet. With a Ridge Wallet, you'll stop carrying around pointless items in your pockets like receipts, old hotel room keys, remember hotels, and spent gift cards. A Ridge Wallet will help you carry less. It uses two metal plates that are bound together by a strong elastic band to keep your cards tightly together, but still easily accessible. Ridge Wallets are RFID blocking. They offer a lifetime guarantee. They're available in aluminum, carbon fiber, and titanium. And they sell lots more than just wallets. They've got battery banks, bags, smartphone covers, and more. So use offer code LINUS to save 10% at ridge.com slash WAN. Finally, the show is brought to you by Squarespace. Do you need a website, but you don't have the know-how? Have you only just started watching Linus Tech Tips and the WAN show? Maybe you've never heard, then, of Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easy to build your own beautiful, functional website. They've got a wide selection of award-winning templates. They're all optimized for mobile, so they'll look great on any device. You can create members-only content for extra revenue. Okay, is it just me? We got Twitter. We got Squarespace. Is everybody getting into the members-only content? How interesting. <laughs> well, it seems anyway. like it. You can create members-only content for extra revenue using Squarespace's member areas. Mm. <laughs> so grow and engage your audience with their powerful and easy-to-use <laughs> tools like their email campaign system. And if you ever need additional help, Squarespace offers webinars, a full series of help guides. Luke has lost it. Uh, <laughs> And you can even contact their customer support via live chat and email. Get started today. Go to squarespace.com forward slash when to get 10% off your first purchase. You are right over there. I can't believe they called it that. <laughs> so tell me something, Squarespace. Is the member area where I... Keep my member. <laughs> like, I just... Would you like to pay uh, to access my member area? Oh, lordy. <laughs> I mean. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. That's, uh, man, someone internally must have brought that up. Yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things, like, nobody called me on the name of the Verified Actual Gamer program. Every company really? we've worked with, yeah, nobody was like, you're really going to call it that? <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, maybe maybe we just like, maybe not everyone actually has a potty mind, you know? Not everyone grew up listening to Blink-182, I guess. Maybe it's that simple, right? Maybe. I just, that seems so obvious. Uh, oh boy, we got some real questions about the Verified Actual Gamer program up in here. Alexis, what if we were to pick up the card in Canada and cross the border? A, you would be violating uh, COVID um, restrictions, yeah, so don't do that. Yeah. Um, and B, then you would have to pay tariffs because it would touch U.S. soil. There you go. Happy to help. Uh, yeah. that's, that's what like I you're do. Not I saw some comments that looked like they were confused. You're not avoiding the tariffs by buying a card in America, to be clear. Yeah, you still have to pay them. That's why they're so expensive. Well, it's part of why they're so expensive now. Yeah. 
It All happens right. when any card enters the States. It doesn't matter how. So what is this? Google is now a privacy company? What does that even mean? I, okay, let's go up to this. It's uh, Help me out here, Luke. I'm, I'm not helping weird. right now. It, it's 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 odd. Um, so back in 2019, Google announced that they had intent uh, that they had intended wait that they had intent of working with other companies to build a more private web. Uh, I remember this. I believe we laughed. Um, <laughs> that does sound like moved, what we would do. And then moved on. <laughs> on March 3rd, a post on the official Google blog followed this up with more information and bold statements that contrast uh, Google's data harvesting strategies. Yeah, this is weird. And they have to have something up their sleeves. I suspect there's something like Google proprietary that they're working on, but we'll get into that in a moment to try to make it so that more stuff funnels through them by doing this. But um, third-party cookies, also known as cross-site tracking cookies, will be phased out in Google Chrome. Mm, really? Mm, yeah. Google claims that they will not be building any alternate identifiers <laughs> to track individuals, sure, as they're browsing the web. And additionally, that they will not use these trackers that they that they definitely super aren't building. They're definitely not okay. making anything. Okay, hold on. Can I, can I just jump in here and say, is it possible that Google has built an AI so powerful that it, it like can infer everything about you just by the one site you're on like the one thing you're doing and it doesn't even need the history anymore. So maybe so much Google is just making it impossible for their less technologically advanced competitors to track you, but they've still got you nailed down. I also wonder if there's just like, if, if, if cookies are too accessible to other companies and they have, like, it feels like they, they might be trying to heighten the barrier of entry. Yeah. Yep, that totally makes sense. So they have other things already, whether it's tracking through your phone, whether it's yep. tracking through your your email, um, all these other various things. And they're thinking, okay, if we kill cookies, yeah, it's bad for us, but maybe it's worse for others. That's maybe something that I'm expecting here. Okay, it's, what else? Uh, it's weird. Despite these altruistic, uh, it says in here intentions. I'm going to say claims. Uh, despite these altruistic claims, Google is still a business that needs to make money. Yes, very much so. And advertising makes up a substantial portion of the revenue, not to mention if we're going to if we're going to be shown ads, it's usually best for them to be relevant, which tracking cookies facilitate. Yes, of course. In their post, Google writes, advances in aggregation, anonymization, and on-device processing and other privacy-preserving technologies offer a clear path to replacing individual identifiers. In fact, our latest tests of FLOC um, show one way to effectively take third-party cookies out of the advertising equation and instead hide individuals within large crowds of people with common interests. Oh my, so maybe you're on it. Chrome intends to make FLOC-based cohorts available for public testing through origin trials with its next release this month. Wow, so I actually kind of like nailed it. Yep, yep. good job. Nice. I actually, I had not read the notes yet. This is, this is awesome. <laughs> Basically, your, your device will build a profile of you and you'll be put into, <laughs> into a it. general category of interests as opposed to having a comprehensive pattern outline based on browsing history and form information. In theory, this should still be effective at advertising, but also in preserving user privacy more strongly. Uh, how this will function in practice is a story that only time will tell. All right. So I guess I have nothing else to say about this because I already uh, said what I thought it was going to be. And I was, that wasn't quite right. I didn't realize that it would uh, use like, you know, your device to create the, like, like a history of you and then kind of file you into a, a neat, tidy little group. But I mean, that's fundamentally pretty much what Google was using the individual information for anyway. So it's not a huge yeah. paradigm shift. Like Luke said, all this really does is increase the barrier to entry so that other providers who want to deliver context appropriate ads are going to have to use Google's service here. <laughs> that's uh, nice. wow. Good job. Wow. That is... Uh, 
That is incredible. So Google is a privacy company in the sense that they want to make sure that your data is private from everybody but Google. They want to make sure that all the money is privately theirs. I like it. I like it. Thanks, Google. They're a publicly traded company. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Google. You are you are truly a benevolent overlord. Please, yes, bless upon me with your <laughs> blessings. <sighs> Speaking of blessings, LTD store, new t-shirt. Oh, yeah. So this is a really cool shirt. It actually looks awesome. It's really kind like of it. a it's kind of a new oh, CPU. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't realize you were wearing it. No. Yeah, it's kind of a new CPU design. But what's really special about it is we've been playing around with the uh, like the reflective dyes that we've used to do some of our uh, really shiny products and mixing them in with regular dyes. So this one right here. Oh no, this is. This is not that. This is a different thing. Uh, <clears throat> Wait, what? Uh, it, n nothing. Carry on. So uh, what we're doing is we are mixing a, not a shiny uh, thing. So this is actually a <laughs> reflective dye. So what happens is because I'm using a really soft light right now, you can't really see it. But under a UV light or under a very bright light, this will actually kind of glow like a like a reflector on your bicycle helmet uh, or like a reflective strip. So both the CPU and the LTT on the back are this kind of like cool reflective material. So if you're in the dark and like a light shines at it, it'll kind of like it'll kind of glow um, on your on your chest if you're into that sort of thing. So that's available over on LTT store right now. Uh, so go ahead and buy one and make sure that you set it up to save your information um, so that next time you need to use LTT store, it'll be really fast to go through the checkout. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Is that is that sort of it? No, I want to talk about the 6700 XT being a paper launch. Where is this? I remember reading that, reading about that. Where is this? There it is. Uh, are you surprised? No. In fact, the first frame of our video is Anthony literally launching paper at my <laughs> head. <laughs> oh, I saw that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, no, we were pretty sure that was going to happen. But, but AMD, AMD has not learned anything. Uh, from their long history of over-promising and under-delivering. Uh, this is a quote. With the AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT launch, we are on track to have significantly more GPUs available for sale at launch. We know it's crazy out there, but we're doing everything we can. Why not just say, it's going to be impossible to get one? Like, I, I don't know. I, uh, uh, yeah. They said before that the RX 6000 series would not be a paper launch. Uh, they've all sold out like basically instantly. Frank Azor famously tweeted, I look forward to taking your $10 when another user tweeted, $10 says AMD will be a paper launch too. Now, what's uh, really not going to help or maybe make no difference at all is that the mining capabilities of these cards will not be limited, unlike the RTX 3060 from NVIDIA. So you'll be fighting with scalpers and miners to obtain a card, per usual. If you do manage to get one, per you usual. could theoretically mine on it to make some of your money back over time. We're actually going to have a video about how to set up NiceHash, um, which is a really easy-to-use mining software. To be clear, I'm not... I'm not telling people go out there and become a commercial miner, you know, set up, you know, 10 rigs of 10 GPUs and suck up all the GPUs. I'm talking about gamers who happen to have a card subsidizing their gaming hobby with some light mining. I'm particularly feeling guilt free about recommending it right now because at least in my part of the world, it happens to still be winter. And so I I'm not going to lie at the office. Some of our powerful workstations are set up to mine when they're idle. Because we have to heat the building anyway. So like it might as well be making money rather than costing money. Like I'm not I'm not gonna apologize for that. We don't have any specific mining rigs set up, but we definitely do have some rigs that are mining. And so like if you're a gamer, why not? You gotta heat your house anyway, you got the GPU anyway. What the hey? Uh, especially, especially it's all it's all about if your house is actually cold. Because then my house is my I shouldn't say house. I don't have a house. My place is incredibly hot all the time because I think 
both my neighbors just Ooh. crank it. So okay. it's like I'm like I'm sweating right now. So that's not really an option for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, at any rate, if you are not actually just wasting electricity for no reason and you'd have to heat up your place anyway, I, I see it as a as a win win. Um, and right. So what's great about that is that even if you have really old hardware, you don't have to care about the power efficiency of it because you're just heating your house. Yay. And oh, there was one other thing that we said that we would talk about on the show today. Oh, should we just at least mention that this eight year old became a professional Fortnite player? What? S Joseph Dean signed with Team 33 in December last year, got a $33,000 signing bonus and a gaming PC. Meanwhile, the game is rated PEGI 12 or ESRB teen. He's been playing that's since not, he was... That's not, a, that's not a law, though. That's no, a it's not. Suggestion. He was playing yeah. since he was four and first noticed by the esports team when he was six and a half. What? Holy. That is nuts. I mean, I guess it's not that crazy. Uh, only two of the top 10 highest earning esports... Uh, uh, excuse me, Fortnite players are over 18. And the World Cup in 2019 was won by then 16-year-old Kyle Bugha Giesdorf, who walked away with $3 million. This is crazy, too. Joseph's mom, Gigi, says she only lets him play for two or three hours a day after school and more on weekends. I mean, that's like a lot, but it's not night and day like he's not going to school. He's like, you know, on the professional gamer track or anything like that, like still going to school. That's... uh. That's kind of that's kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy. He plays piano. He says playing piano helped him a lot with the keyboard. He says and mouse. But I mean, that could maybe make sense. Yeah, just I mean, having good yeah. fine motor control is never a, a bad thing when it comes to operating Definitely. a computer. I know you can often kind of identify pianists when they type. Because they're, yeah, I know. Yeah. And they're, they're often very good typists. So that makes sense. Age prevents him from streaming on Twitch. Oh, man. In 2019, an 11-year-old professional player was actually banned from Twitch after his real age was discovered. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, this is crazy. All right. Okay. The last thing we wanted to talk about was the Arizona House bill that would require an allowance for third-party payment on app platforms. I mean, this is sort of pertinent to you. Do you want to run us through this one or shall I? Oh, yeah, sure. Um just before we jump into that, one thing I want to mention mm -hmm. is that some people have been asking about the desk pads, and I have heard from Nick um, that apparently there will be a late March restock. We hope. Um, Anything we hope. can happen in this COVID world, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, True. There's nothing yeah. we can do to prevent you know, a container from getting stuck in the port for two or three weeks, so don't hold your breath. Uh, I don't want to guarantee anything, but that is the most current information we have. Yeah, now we're going to be talking about some American politics. A lot of people know. We don't necessarily know everything about American politics. Uh, Arizona House advances bill requiring allowance for third-party payment on app platforms. Sounds super cool. Mobile software development community might be in for a big change in Arizona. The bill HB 2005, backed by the Coalition for App Fairness, composed of Epic, Match, and Spotify includes an amendment that specifically prohibits stores exceeding 1 million downloads from requiring a developer that is uh, domiciled in this state to use a particular in-app payment system as an exclusive mode of payments. So if you have a headquarters in Arizona, mm -hmm. you be able to use another one that's so oddly specific i mean that's the way it is in the states though right it's basically like 52 countries many countries and then yeah. some other countries that don't count as countries for whatever because they're like districts or whatever little um, and too new or something who knows um well i don't think they're particularly new like uh puerto rico is not new <laughs> oh right that's fair yeah um I, I don't follow that Guam, stuff. Guam is not especially new, I don't think. <laughs> Rough. Um, this is this is all of this is even after uh, intense lobbying effects. 
but wow, they're very not new. 1898 okay, they were, was when Guam became a U.S. territory. Yeah, sorry. I, I will I let you were, finish. Go ahead. Sorry. They were notably newer than that. Thanks, no. Tony. Um, so this is after intense lobbying effects, uh, efforts Sorry, by Apple against the bill. Uh, the bill narrowly passed uh, 31 to 29 with all but one Democrat voting against and all but one Republican voting for it. Um, David... Heinemeyer? Looks good to me. Nice. Uh, David Heinemeyer Hansen, the creator of Hey, who got in a spat with Apple about this very topic back in June 2020 on Twitter. You guys might remember that if you've been watching Wancho for yep. a long time. We talked about it. Uh, is prepared to move his company to Arizona should the bill pass. Other developers might want to join. I, I mean, can see yeah, that happening, 100%. If, if we were an American developer and this was like definitely becoming a thing, I would be poking Linus and being like, hey, we need to figure something out uh, because it is actually that big of a deal. Um, the bill still has to make it through the Senate and not get vetoed by the governor before enshrining in the law. The issue has spread to other states with Minnesota and potentially in Illinois uh, introducing similar legislation. So we'll, we'll have to see how this goes. In the Fascinating. Future. Can I just say like kudos to the uh, to the Republicans in Arizona for pushing this forward like this is. It's all fine and good for a marketplace to, you know, allow you to use it. That's good, but that's not fair and open competition. That's that's a gun to your head, basically. If you want to be a mobile developer, then you're just going to have to use our store and do things our way. Um, I I absolutely, I I'm yeah I'm I'm good, I'm good. This looks good. It's it's. It's largely specific because I know some people are going to bring up like, well, you don't have to join that market. It's, it's largely to do with, with the mobile space yep. and how, how, how small and binary the mobile space is. I, um, uh, I, I think this is such a smart play from Arizona because there's a lot of ways that you can attract business to your city or to your county or to your state or to your country, right? And one of the ways that lawmakers seem to lean on, like immediately, they go straight for the tax breaks and the grants. And it's like, uh, actually, there's a lot of other things that you could do to be more business friendly, like just help businesses make money um, and not just you know have them not pay any taxes so you can't build roads and maintain your schools and all of that stuff. <laughs> Uh, ICJ yeah. says politics. I'm gone. It's not politics. It's tech. It just happens to be that sometimes tech gets affected by politics, and it's that's why politics is important. It it really yeah. does matter. I, I suspect you'll see more developers than just hey making that move as well. Oh, I suspect some of them might wait to see what other states go on. We did, we did mention at least two names and there might be more after that. Some of them might hold their cards and wait to see if there's one a little closer to home or one that is literally their home. Uh, but I would not be surprised if there was, I would not be surprised if there at all, if there was movement of pre-existing companies and I can pretty much guarantee that if there's a new company, a very small one that is thinking of starting up, they will strategically start somewhere. Hundred percent. Um, so that might not be something jobs. that you hear a ton about. Yeah. You'll you'll hear mo more about companies moving. You won't hear a ton about companies strategically starting in a specific area. Yep. But I guarantee you that will happen. Drumel asks, "Why did the Democrats vote against it?" That's very surprising. Don't be surprised. Uh, you know, there's no political party that's actually on your team. It all comes down to you know what gets them in office. And at the end of the day, if this is a small time issue that isn't making national news, um, and so there's no kind of, there's no attention on it, it's much easier for one side or another to end up being lobbied into doing something that's off brand for them. So there you have it. Sorry to kind of burst your bubble there. If you are as simple enough to brand yourself as one or the other, then you pretty much, um, I, I, I don't know what to say to you. You have to analyze each issue individually. You can't just, don't fall for the branding. Treat 
political parties like companies because they are pretty much the same thing. It doesn't matter what it is, okay? A retailer, sports team, political party, they're all companies. They're all trying to sell you and market you something. So try to ignore it. Try to just look at the product, decide for yourself what you actually need because that's the only thing that will ever actually work. All right. I think that's pretty much, oh, we should probably do some, uh, we should probably do some super chats. Yes. All right, I'm going back to the beginning of the show. Uh, Jackson says, they announced an update to Ethereum that is expected to significantly hurt mining profitability, so the limiter will be irrelevant in a few months anyway. I mean, there's been updates to Ethereum that are expected to hurt mining profitability for a long time. I mean, the move to proof of stake in like, what, a couple of years is supposed to basically kill it for small time miners, I think. But you never know, there could be another altcoin or whatever the case may be. Hayden says, did you see the videos about Intel's rise and fall from channel Cold Fusion? In part two, he included your rant on the 10900K. I didn't. Uh, maybe I'll uh, find Fusion, no. some time to check I'm that out. pretty sure, I think, let me just... Cold Fusion, Cold Fusion. Yeah, cool channel. That's awesome. I'll have to check that out. I've watched quite a few things from Cold Fusion. Cool. This video is to laughing stock. Well, gee, I don't know if we called them a laughing stock, did we? Ah, we might have laughed a little. Oh wow, this is a really long video. Yeah. Oh neat. Okay. Cool. Uh what else we got in the super chat of Malats today? Uh, da, da, da. these are questions I answered. Uh, polter bit, polter bit. Uh, Linus, thanks for everything you guys at LTT do. I've been watching for years. Please take down Big Scalp. At the end of the day, I don't want to oversell this, guys. You know, this is not going to get rid of scalping. All that we can do is do our absolute best to fight scalpers with the products that we are able to get our hands on. Right. And yeah. and like some someone commented saying like, oh, what stops someone who is a verified actual gamer to like just flip it on eBay? It's like, well, nothing. Like no system is perfect. We're we're trying to implement the best thing that we can yeah. uh, to try to give the highest chance possible of landing it in the hands of someone who's gonna put in the put it in their system and game on it. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas says, I went to Micro Center this past Tuesday in Georgia and people were fist fighting over a single 3080. It was actually pretty funny. Fortunately, I was a lucky lad who got one before. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Igor says, still rocking an RX 480. Um, and high end cards are, yeah, just at a point where they're utterly unreasonable. Totally. 100%. Uh, Metal Lupa says, planning on selling shirts on Amazon at any point. Uh, right now, it's a little challenging um, selling things on Amazon for a variety of reasons. So I don't want to get into like any details, um, but we have had some difficulty with the water bottles, for example. But I do know that the ABCs of gaming will be on Amazon fairly shortly. Abul cool. Ab Abdullah says, something to note is that electric heating isn't the most efficient way to heat. If your home has a heat pump, uh, that's true. Yes, if you have a heat pump, that is more efficient than using straight electric heat. Good to know for everyone. Uh, Ellen 2 Pro says, I think the idea behind those is that they're protectoriates and we're not a colonial society, so we didn't want to just swallow them up without having a say-so. Uh... Yeah. Now we're getting more down the line of politics. Yeah, and... now we're getting into politics. I'm sure if you asked uh I'm sure if you asked like Puerto Rico if they'd like to have all the benefits of being a state or the District of Columbia, they'd say yes. Um, <laughs> at this point in time. Uh Johnny says, Where's AMD's hardware accelerated GPU scheduling? It was in Adrenaline 2020 edition 20.5.1 beta, then it just went away. Uh I actually don't know. That's a wonderful question. And finally, Ryan says, I just built my girlfriend a computer for her dream of 3D animation based on your build guide. Thank you for everything. Hey, you're welcome, Ryan. Freaking awesome. So that's it for The WAN Show. We will see you again next week. Same bad to time, same bad to channel. Bye!
Wait, hold on. Very important. Pwn for Skittles got a last minute super chat in there. What should I eat for dinner? Skittles, obviously. It's right Only in the name. Skittles. It's got to be Just a Skittles. big bowl of Skittles. Giant bowl of Skittles. Oh, Nate says, uh, glad you guys don't rely on Amazon to sell your merch. Keep the margins and keep delivering the quality. You know what's up, Nate. All right. Later, guys. Bye.